Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're diving into something I think we've all kind of pondered while gazing up at a clear blue sky. You know those, uh, those wispy white trails left behind by airplanes? You sent in a podcast episode about aviation and its impact on climate change and well, I'm ready to explore those contrails with you. Yeah, it is kind of interesting how those lines streaking across the sky often go unnoticed, even though they represent a significant factor in the environmental impact of flying. For sure. It's so easy to take for granted the convenience of air travel, right? Yeah. We book a flight, hop on a plane, and zoom off to our destination without really um, considering the hidden costs. Like the podcast pointed out, burning jet fuel, just like any fossil fuel releases CO2, a primary contributor to climate change. Yeah, and you know, as you heard in the episode, aviation accounts for a notable portion of global CO2 emissions, about uh, two, three percent. Right. While that number might seem small compared to other industries, it's just one piece of a much bigger puzzle. Okay, so there's always a catch, isn't there? What makes aviation's impact more complex than just the CO2 emissions? It all comes down to uh, where those emissions are released high in the atmosphere. You see, it's not just about the amount of CO2, but the location that significantly amplifies aviation's effect on the climate. Now that's where things get really interesting. Tell me more about what happens to those emissions way up there. Okay, so picture this. At those cruising altitudes, emissions like nitrogen oxides generated from burning fuel react with sunlight, creating ozone. Oh, ozone. A greenhouse gas we don't want more of. Then there's water vapor, which condenses in the cold air at those heights to form, uh, you know, those contrails you mentioned earlier. Those icy clouds trap heat much more effectively than CO2 alone, exacerbating the warming effect. Even those tiny particles, the soot from the exhaust, contribute by absorbing sunlight and heating the surrounding air. It's like a chain reaction of warming happening high above us. Wow, so those emissions are kind of like adding an extra layer of insulation around the planet, trapping heat that would otherwise escape. That's a great way to put it. The podcast called this radiative forcing. Essentially, it means that the warming impact of aviation is nearly three times greater than just the CO2 emissions themselves. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a bit like finding out that seemingly harmless contrails pack a much bigger punch than we realize. That is a uh, pretty shocking fact, I have okay. to say. So we've got CO2 from the fuel itself, plus this multiplier effect from those high altitude emissions. It feels like we're only beginning to grasp the full impact of aviation on the planet. But then what's the alternative? Should we all just swear off flying altogether? Well, it's not quite as simple as, you know, grounding all flights. Yeah. Air travel is so deeply intertwined with our global economy, our ability to connect with people and cultures, and even our access to, you know, essential goods and services. Instead of eliminating air travel, we need to explore ways to mitigate its impact to find a more sustainable path forward. Finding that balance, like you said, between the undeniable benefits of air travel and and the urgent need to lessen its environment environmental footprint. That's that's a challenge to be sure. So where do we even begin to tackle something as complex as making aviation more sustainable? Well, the good news is there are already some exciting solutions emerging. The podcast you shared highlighted something called Sustainable Aviation Fuel, or S. Have you have you heard about this? Yes, it sounds so so streamlined. What what exactly is it? Imagine this: powering those massive airplanes with something as simple as plants, or or even used cooking oil. That's that's essentially the concept behind SF. It's a, it's produced from renewable sources. And here's the truly impressive part: using SF can cut carbon emissions by up to eighty percent compared to uh, compared to conventional jet fuel. Okay, eighty percent. Now that that is a game changer. Why why aren't we seeing this F everywhere then? Well, there are a few hurdles to overcome. Right now, SF is much more expensive to produce than traditional jet fuel, and, and there simply isn't enough being made to meet the global demand of the entire aviation industry. So it's a, it's a classic case of supply and demand. Makes sense. What about those futuristic electric planes we keep hearing about? Are those a, a viable solution for greener air travel? They they definitely hold a lot of promise, especially for, for those shorter flights we often take. Right. Imagine zero tailpipe emissions. It's a it's a fantastic goal. However, the technology for electric planes is still in its uh it's still in its early stages. What are the uh, what are the main things holding electric planes back from becoming more widespread? The biggest challenge right now is uh, is battery technology. The batteries we have are still quite heavy and and don't hold enough charge to power uh, to power long distance flights. To truly make electric planes a mainstream option, we'll need some some major breakthroughs in battery efficiency and uh, and energy density. So it sounds like SAF is a promising solution, but needs a boost to become more accessible and affordable. 
While electric planes are an exciting prospect but need more time to develop, are there other ways to lessen aviation's impact in the meantime? Absolutely. One strategy that often gets overlooked is, is simply making the planes we already have more fuel efficient. You mean finding ways to make these giant metal birds sip fuel instead of guzzle it? How, do, how does that even work? You might be surprised by the ingenuity. Engineers are constantly coming up with, uh, with innovative designs. For instance, using lighter materials like carbon fiber in plane construction can significantly reduce weight and drag, leading to less fuel consumption. It's amazing how those seemingly small tweaks can have a, a, a big impact. What other strategies are, are being explored? It's not just about the physical plane itself. Optimizing flight paths, uh, like using more direct routes and, and minimizing the time spent taxiing on the runway can also lead to significant fuel savings. So it's a, it's a two-pronged approach, improving the technology of the planes themselves and, and implementing smarter operational strategies. It, it sounds like a lot of progress is already underway, right. but what about us, the passengers? What, what role can we play in making aviation more sustainable? Is it, is it all on the shoulders of the airlines and, and technological advancements? Yeah. It's easy to feel like our individual choices, you know, they might not make much of a difference when we're talking about something as massive as the aviation industry. But I'm curious, what can we do as passengers to be more mindful of our impact? Does it all boil down to, you know, simply flying less? Well, while those larger systemic changes are, are crucial, our individual actions do add up. Remember the carbon offsetting option you mentioned earlier? Yeah, right. I often see that offered when booking flights, but I'll admit, I'm, I'm never quite sure how effective it actually is. Yeah. It's actually a, a fairly straightforward concept. Essentially, when you opt for carbon offsetting, you pay an additional fee on top of your ticket price. That money then goes towards funding projects aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions elsewhere, uh, counterbalancing the emissions generated by your flight. So, so funding things like planting trees or investing in renewable energy projects, that, that kind of thing. Exactly. The goal is to offset the carbon footprint of your flight by supporting initiatives that remove or prevent an equivalent amount of CO2 from entering the atmosphere. That makes sense. But does it actually work? Are those offsets truly making a difference or is it more of a feel-good measure? That's a question with a lot of debate surrounding it. While carbon offsetting can be a step in the right direction, it's not, you know, a perfect solution. There are valid concerns about how effectively some offsetting projects are implemented and verified. Some critics argue that it can create a false sense of security, leading people to believe they can, you know, offset their way out of the problem without actually reducing their flying habits. So it's not a get out of jail free card for frequent flyers. Mm -hmm. We can't just like buy our way out of the environmental impact. What would you say is the most impactful thing individuals can do then? The most significant step we can take as individuals is to, well, simply fly less often. Now, I'm not suggesting we all become grounded and never experience the joy of discovering new places, right. but it's worth taking a moment to, to reflect on our travel choices. To really ask ourselves, is this trip truly essential or, or is it something I could approach differently? Precisely. Could you combine multiple trips into one, explore alternative modes of transportation like train travel, or embrace video conferencing for those business meetings instead of always hopping on a plane? These, these small shifts in our mindset and travel habits can have a, a surprisingly big impact in the long run. It's about becoming more mindful travelers rather than just frequent flyers checking destinations off a list. I like that mindful travel. And, and when you do need to fly, consider supporting airlines that are actively taking steps to, to reduce their environmental impact. So choosing airlines that are investing in things like SAF, researching and implementing those uh, electric planes, and constantly working to optimize their operations for fuel efficiency, it's about putting our money where our values are, in a way. Exactly. By by actively choosing airlines that prioritize sustainability, we send a powerful message to the industry as a whole, encouraging them to invest in and prioritize greener solutions. This deep dive has been incredibly eye-opening. You know, we started by talking about those contrails we see streaking across the sky, and now we're really grappling with this, this complex interplay between aviation, climate change, and our individual choices. While the challenges are, are significant, it's, it's heartening to see the progress being made and the potential solutions on the horizon. And it feels like the conversation is, is shifting in a positive direction. It's a journey that requires collaboration, innovation, and a willingness to adapt from all of us. It, It'll be fascinating to witness how the future of aviation unfolds as technology advances and our understanding of these complex issues deepens. It really makes you wonder, as aviation technology continues to evolve, 
What trade-offs will we be willing to make as a society? Will we always prioritize faster travel, or will we embrace potentially slower, more sustainable options for the greater good of our planet? That's, that's something for all of us to ponder. It's a question with, with no easy answers, but, but it's a conversation worth having. Well said. This deep dive was just the starting point. We encourage you to explore the links provided in the show notes to continue learning about this, this crucial topic. Until next time, stay curious, keep asking those important questions, and let's all strive to be more informed and engaged citizens of this planet we share.